I'm James Ford, and I uh, uh, am the guiding teacher for the Empty Moon Zen uh, community, and we are at our uh, uh, weekly Saturday mornings at uh, uh, a few uh, a few words on on the nature of, of of the spiritual journey, and particularly the maps that we 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 have been gifted uh, from from our ancestors to to help us. Uh, uh, along the way, um, to kind of set the tone. How about some, some words from Mary Oliver? All summer, I made friends with the creatures nearby. They flowed through the fields and under the tent walls, or padded through the door, grinning through their many teeth, looking for seeds, suet, sugar, muttering and humming, opening the bread box, happiest when there was milk and music. But once in the night I heard a sound outside the door. The canvas bulged slightly. Something was pressing inward at eye level. I watched, trembling. Sure I had heard the click of claws, the smack of lips outside my gee gauzy house. I imagined the red eyes, the broad tongue, the enormous lap, would it be friendly to? Fear defeated me, and yet not in faith and not in madness, but with the courage I thought my dream deserved, I stepped outside. It was gone. Then I whirled at the sound of some shambling tonnage. Did I see a black haunch slipping back through the trees? Did I see the moonlight shining on it? Did I actually reach out my arms toward it, toward paradise, like the fading of the dearest, wildest hope, the dark heart of the story that is all the reason for its telling? I think the best analogy to what we actually find on our spiritual lives is how much it is like a game of snakes and ladders. There's more than an element of chance to this. We're born into one situation or another. We can make up stories about why, but the important thing is here we are, you and me. You roll the dice and you slide to the bottom. You roll the dice and you end up at the top. Ascribing meaning here can be a fatal mistake. It can even be soul killing. Now, maybe if your perspective is broad enough, you can see all the near infinite variations of the dance of causality. And with that, chance isn't a good word. But. If you live in the world most of us occupy, it is, it very much looks like you do what you can do, and after that, it's in the hands of the gods. With that, a suggestion. It's better to let go of chasing after why you're here. If you can, then aspects of the way that can be very helpful become apparent. You may be more familiar with the with snakes and ladders as snakes and ladders as shoots shoots and ladders. The name Milton Bradley gave to the ancient Indian board game called Snakes and Ladders. Shoots being less disturbing than snakes for the intended audience, I, I assume. The origins of snakes and ladders, or moksha patam, is literally lost in the mists of antiquity. It's always been a children's game, the element of pure luck can bore adults, although I find myself thinking of Jesus's caution, how on this intimate way we really do need to become his children. Hindus, Jains, Buddhists, and later Christians have all used it to teach morality to kids. Here we catch that fundamental aspect of religion expressed as the golden rule. In the oldest strata, it appears to teach about desire, destiny, and the weirdness of karma. So, 
an invitation into the mess of life, the wildness of this roller coaster ride, and the, well, the just plain luck that is such a large part of our lives, material and spiritual. In Snakes and Ladders, the ladders were associated with virtues such as generosity, grace, and success. I find that success being counted as a virtue is an interesting thing. One of the little traps of religion as social control. While the snakes represented vices like lust, anger, theft, and murder. An interesting footnote to it is how of the 100 squares which make up the game, more are snakes. The way of virtue is always harder. Returning to that um, um, ghost story from The Gateless Gate, which I like to return to. Uh, uh, um, one of the turning points is about the identity of our awakening in this very body. Another turn on the question, what if the old abbot gave the right answer each time? What about that? Uh, Snakes and Ladders reveals a bit of the answer to that question. And if you're concerned about the luck aspect of this. I recall the guidance of several of my teachers that awakening actually is an accident. You can't attribute any specific cause that precipitates the great eruptions of our hearts. The spirit, in fact, rests where it will. However, and this is so important, our practices make us accident prone. They attract the spirit. It would seem anyway. So from one angle, accidents. From another, the ascent of the holy mountain. There's a Tibetan version of the game, ascending the spiritual levels. I like that. Our practices on the Zen way include the great disciplines of meditation, but it also has a container of an ethical life captured for us within the 16 Bodhisattva precepts. Remember that spiritual bypassing thing. This game reminds us of the intimate connections between our spiritual aspirations and what we do. This is where engaging the actions of our lived lives and knowing something about our inner urges, especially the ones we don't want to look at, needs shoring up. It can be critical for those walking the intimate way. And of course, there's the image of awakening, the thing that is not what you think. The fat guy in the tenth of the Oxfordic pictures. So while I'm fond of the snakes and ladders model, ultimately as a map, it, like all of them, doesn't quite work. A map, but perhaps more like a child's copy of a pirate's treasure map. Much of it's there, but the direction isn't quite right. There are many such maps, uh, both ancient and modern. Um, I love several of them. Uh, uh, the Oxfording pictures especially has been useful in my life. With that said, with snakes and ladders in mind, I've long cherished another image or map of the way, um, composed in modern times by uh, the Zen teacher Dosho Port, who many of us in this community know. He offers Six steps. Idealization, you know, kind of, oh, oh, we found the way. Isn't that just the most wonderful thing? To covert cling to hopes for magical gain. Yeah, yeah. Calmness, peace, enlightenment. Three, extreme crabbiness at self and others. I like to live there. What, you know, you know, uh, projections, uh, um, annoyances, you know, geez, Louise, the, 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 the long retreats where the person next to you, uh, uh, just, uh, their tummy just never stops gurgling, uh, or discovering that was you. Four, steadily walking without getting anywhere. The practice that we are engaged in is a lifetime engagement. It's one step after the other. Sometimes it's up incredible uh, steep hill. Sometimes it's slogging through swamps. Sometimes it's in deserts. It often, often seems like it isn't going anywhere. 
five, experiencing fruition. What uh, Joko Beck used to call small intimations, in which I think of as enlightening experiences, moments of astonishing grace and a possibility of a world that we normally miss, but is always around here. And six, falling into a well. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I just, just love that. I think, in fact, if you were reading any other spiritual uh, map, and and it uh, and there's a stage in there's stages involved in it. Um, after each step, there should be falling into a well. The view from the well is a very interesting place, and I love that he makes it at the, the end, except he doesn't actually. And then he adds in, repeat. <laughs> so maybe that's a seven step, uh, but it's a, it's a divine spiral uh, ever into the bottom of the well, to the depths, to the depths. What I'm pretty sure of is there are innumerable wells, more snakes than ladders. To be a body is to fall into wells. And the world is filled with these ands. One of these wells, of course, is a tumble into the great forgetting. But mostly we're talking about that other well uh, or those other wells. If we're really following the way, we fall into pretty much all of them. Although it seems many of these wells were custom dug just for us, you and me. I suspect every chapter in this reflection that is our lives, appropriately end with falling in a well. But for a moment, let's return to that other well, the big one, the great forgetting, the vast, the unknowing, the empty, the place that seems to be available within any culture and its religions, the perennial, the thread to the deep, our true, true path. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Maybe there's